Now I speak very carefully of what may have been the most difficult moment in all of this solitary journey to atonement. That concluding descent into the paralyzing despair of divine withdrawal when he cries in ultimate loneliness, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? With all the conviction of my soul, I testify that he did please his father perfectly and that a perfect father did not forsake his son in that hour. Nevertheless, that the supreme sacrifice of his son might be as complete as it was voluntary and solitary, the father briefly withdrew from Jesus the comfort of his spirit. It was required, indeed it was central to the significance of the atonement, that this perfect son who had never spoken ill nor done wrong, nor touched an unclean thing. He had to know how the rest of humankind would feel when we did commit such sins. For his atonement to be infinite and eternal, he had to feel what it was like to die not only physically, but spiritually. When the uttermost farthing had then been paid, then finally and mercifully, it was finished. Against all odds, Jesus of Nazareth, the living Son of the living God, restored physical life where death had held sway and brought joyful spiritual redemption out of sin and hellish darkness and despair. One of the great consolations of this Easter season is that because Jesus walked such a long, lonely path utterly alone, we do not have to do so this Easter week and always. May we stand by Jesus Christ at all times and in all things and in all places that we may be in even until death. For surely, that is how he stood by us when it was unto death and when he had to stand entirely and utterly alone.